Hi, it's Trevor Leggett. Welcome to the Leggett Podcast. Yeah, so, so culturally, I mean, obviously moving to France, I, you, know, I, you know, both lived in France for quite a long time now. I, lived here, I moved here, what, nearly 32 years ago. Um, I knew, what, 20... 20, 22 20, years 22 ago. 22 yeah. years ago. So, you know, I... Although, although, in a way, I was absolutely enthralled by having at your fingertips amazing healthcare, that the education system was second to none as a state system, that the roads were amazing, that, you know, it's a really well-organised country with amazing infrastructure, great services. I wasn't really quite ready for the expense of it. It's a very expensive luxury and I think the French are happy we're always been happy to pay huge amounts of social security charges which is like the PAYE charges on wages which the employees pay which they have to earn which means that their net wages are considerably less than in the UK in the same job but it's something that they value very highly and I had no idea how much it cost. Uh, even to this day, with the number of staff that I have at my company, the, the bill is astronomical and, and, and going up. But for most French people, I think it's important. I think that they don't mind providing they're getting the service. And when they get angry is when, despite paying a lot, that service gets diminished in any way and they're prepared to fight for it, as we've seen from demonstrations, the yellow jackets, these and setting fire well. to stuff and burning. And I, I <laughs> well, think let's that's look great. At, let's look at some happy points. No, but I think that's so, a good yeah. point about France. I think it's fine that the French actually stand up for their... Well, they their, had a their, revolution. Their, you know, they had a revolution, <laughs> and to be honest, I think we should have had one in Britain a long time ago. So I, I think, think it's a damn shame we don't, and, yeah. and, and it wouldn't it be a worse place, Britain, as a republic, frankly. Mm -hmm. That's my view, but not everybody's, mm -hmm. I know. But, but. I think the thing, <laughs> I think things when I moved over that I noticed the most was um, the, the, the cultural differences. First of all, you know, I didn't speak a word of French when I came to France, and you did a lot of the speaking for me initially, but it's so important to learn the language. Yeah, because... but you learned French quite quickly. You just didn't like using it. You understand the French perfectly yeah, well. Yeah, but, but I think everyone has this idea in their head that we're going to move to France, we're going to be in the middle of nowhere, we're going to have all French neighbours, we're going to be playing ball on Sundays with our next-door neighbour, we're going to be having a Perros with Fifi on the other side. And it's not like that. It isn't like that at all. It takes quite a while to get integrated. And one yeah. of the things I noticed the most is that everything shuts between 12 and 2. And coming from London, you know, I could pop out and get a sandwich at 3 o'clock in the it afternoon. It doesn't shut between 12 and 2 because if you want to eat, you've got to get there between 12.15 and 1 o'clock. Because yeah. after 1 o'clock, they'll probably they won't serve, serve you. No, they won't. <laughs> and that, and that. So you've got I, a 45 yeah. minute window to get into a restaurant and order your food. Yeah. Which is ridiculous. And that is a big that is a big <laughs> difference to the UK, which is fast food. But I really like that because yeah. it means that people actually stop and take time to have a Well, lunch. the funny thing is you get into that routine mm. and you're actually starving hungry like a Frenchman after about a year. <laughs> By about quarter to 12, your tummy starts <laughs> rumbling. And the next thing you think, oh, I'm starving. Yeah. And you, you've got to eat at that time because yeah. that's your window to get something to eat. And I think the and I think the that's all you can do in those hours because all the shops close. So all you can do is eat and drink, which I think is quite funny. But mm. you know, if, when I was at work, I'd pop out to the garden centre at lunchtime. But the garden centre shut at lunchtime because everyone who's French has gone to lunch. Yeah, but a lot of people actually carry on work while they're eating. The eating thing is a cultural thing. It's a gap and they they don't actually stop work. They quite often go and eat with their colleagues. Mm. And they'll actually sit down and work, have a working lunch, mm. which is having a proper meal in the middle mm. of the day. Well, that's better than eating a takeaway at eight o'clock at night. The other thing I like about the French <laughs> is the aperos, because they don't do that in the UK. And I, I oh no, uh, you, you would like the aperos. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't <Please>. noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, but the great thing the great thing is is in the UK you'd have dinner parties and so 
But what I love about the French is that to get to know your neighbours, they will just throw an apero thing and you'll arrive at six and you leave at eight. Everyone arrives at the same time. Hey, you have an apero from six to eight? Yeah, two hours it's normally you, an apero. You, your aperos are longer than my, my aperos from six to seven. Yeah, well, I that's get rid of them. you don't like spending any money on the wine. So. No, because no, I drink less than you do. <laughs> no, I mean, if I invite people yeah. around for an apero, I want them gone and this is staying for dinner. <laughs> well, I think the apero is a nice thing that they don't do in the UK. And it does mean that everyone gets together. And I think it also avoids the awkwardness because you know you're only there for two hours. You're not there for the whole night. Two hours. Two hours or an hour, depending. Apparel. Most of the apparels I've been to have been six till eight, um, which is nice. Um, so that, that's a difference to the UK. The other thing I love about the French culture is they still, in market towns, for example, near where we are, you still have, you get your bread from the boulangerie, you get your meat from the boucherie. You know, they do have supermarkets, but yeah. the little shops still yeah. exist. And particularly and the markets are amazing as well. The, the, the quality of food in the markets. Yeah, because it's all locally, locally produced. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the other funny thing about, um, I've noticed in France, is they only sell French wine in the supermarkets you'll get one little tiny selection of international wines which is the really horrible international wines so, so no. you only get the French Sidney Bray yeah. Algerian <laughs> yeah, poison busy Matthias Rosé and stuff we'll get, you know. we'll we'll get done by them next <laughs> but yeah but that's another thing so you it's all French the French support the French which I think is, uh, is, is well, nice you can't well. exactly blame them the wine's pretty good it is good. And the food. I mean, the variety of wine in France, it doesn't really, you like, you want Loire, Bordeaux, Burgundy, mm. you know, it's choice. Mm. And nothing tastes anything like the other one. So it's very hard to get bored with it. I know that sounds as chauvinistic as a Frenchman, but I mean, frankly, it's cool. Mm. And if you want something that's a bit out of the ordinary now, you've got the Long Doc Roussillon with all these mm. wonderful, like, oh, oh I got I had a bottle of something last night. It was amazing. I can't remember what it was called now. It was called something Cockart, and it was a 2015. It was absolute velvet. Fabulous. It was a present mm -hmm. for my birthday, somebody left me. Oh, nice. Yeah. We had the other thing, they, uh, which we didn't <laughs> have in the UK. Sorry, we're going off track here. Yeah, it's the chasse. <laughs> Isn't it? The chasse. We don't have that in well, the Well, the chasse UK. is great because the chasse is like, uh, when they come to my place and they're far, they're, they're, they're the, the hunters around the ground, the, the hunters all go around yeah. there. They keep coming around because they don't want me to ban them from hunting on the farm. So, so then you have to come up with some recipe to make half a wild boar. And of course, you've got the fillet, which is lovely. You can chop that into little sort of medallions and pan fry that. And it's delicious. Mm. But then you've got loads of bits that you don't know what to do. And all you can do with that is make a stew. And you make it what they yeah. call a, a, a sieve. Mm. And, uh, that, and then you add your wine, of course, mm. to do, and that would mean you can make some amazing, but it's long cooking winter dishes and, you know, you've got to have time to do it. And I mean, they are amazing. Mm. But in, I, the, in the end, I get too much of this mm. stuff and have to give it away. And last year they gave me three deer and a whole wild boar. Mm. I mean, I can't eat that. It's ridiculous. <laughs> But, the, uh, but that is something that is all across France in the countryside areas, which yeah. they don't do in the UK. Yeah. They don't do any type of hunting I think like they that. do if you're in the countryside. Private, the but yeah. not as Well, you, can't, you haven't got right to roam anyway, so you mm. can't go hunting all over anybody's mm. land like you do in France. Mm. And, and the actual fact that you know, a lot of British people make the mistake, in my opinion, of stopping people from hunting on their land because they're used to it in England. They go, oh, this is my land. Mm. It's a fence. So I'm going to put a fence all the way around it and no one's allowed on my land. And I don't like people killing animals, so therefore I'm not going to allow anyone to hunt. What they forget is that is such a part of post-revolution mm. France, which is the right to hunt. And think, Because prior to the revolution, they didn't have the right to go anywhere. Mm. So after the revolution, the right that you can wander over anybody's land and go and get your dinner, basically, mm. is a really important mm. thing to a Frenchman. Now, when you turn around and say to him, you can't do that anymore, he's like, oh, how dare you, Englishman? Mm. <laughs> so in yeah. order to get on with people, you have to fit yeah. in and go along with stuff, even if you think, you know, I don't want... You know, mm. I don't want people roaming around with shotguns or I don't want this and that. You, know, you, you kind of have to... Mm. Yeah. I think the other thing um, that I've noticed culturally is pol politesse, the politeness of the French. Like if you walk into a shop, you can't just say, could I have one of those, please? If you don't say bonjour, 
they will say it to you and, and look at you oddly. Oh my God, that's so it's, annoying. But it's so important. That is so annoying. Yeah, you, I know, but you have you, to say on. bonjour before you say yeah, anything. I know, but what, don't you hate it when you go to something and they go, bonjour, <laughs> because you've forgotten to say bonjour. And you go, oh, God, <laughs> yes, sake, here it, we go. It is. And you go, go okay, bonjour. But no. politesse, politeness. Yeah, I know, I agree, but didn't yeah. you make a point of it? Yeah. I mean, come on. I yeah. mean, especially if you're English. Yeah. That is annoying. Yeah. That's really annoying. It's more annoying when you get the tourists who are English who are speaking loudly in the supermarket with a French well, accent in English. <laughs> yeah. If you <laughs> don't understand, I'll just shout louder. <laughs> yeah, say it louder and say it with a French accent. <laughs> I'm sure the French get really annoyed with that. Um, but yeah, I have noticed that politesse is, is, is a really important as a cultural thing, which it, you don't see that so much in the UK. Um, anymore, unfortunately. No, you don't get people going up to French people coming in and starting to go, hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> <Can you imagine? laughs> yeah. 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 There you go, see. And I, I've noticed um, <laughs> with the schools as well, the schools are much smaller, particularly in the countryside. That's quite different to schools in well, the UK. Well, they didn't used to be. Their school mm. in the, the countryside is small because everyone's gone and because the jobs are in the cities and mm. people have gone to the schools. There's no other reason for it. Mm. There's not a lot of work in the countryside and that's why the schools are small. Mm. You know, I think a lot of villages were hoping with teletravai and mm. people working from home that these villages would repopulate. And that, but really they have to a certain extent, mm. but I mean... Teletravai hasn't worked out for everybody and a lot of companies mm. have found that it actually isn't the ideal solution and mm. I must admit my experience with it wasn't the greatest. Mm. The other thing about the French is they drive on the wrong side of the road. No, they didn't. <laughs> they, they, funnily enough, they used to drive on the same side as us. But on they, the right. Yeah, mm. they did. And but you're right, yeah, they're, they're, we act, you know, I would agree the British do drive on the right side of the road, which is the right side mm. of the road. <laughs> which we found out that all racing cars are right hand drive. No, not all racing drives, but obviously the weight, the weight mm. is better on the inside of the curve than on the outside mm. of the curve, and most tracks are clockwise anyway, you know. Mm. There yeah. is a couple in France, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that go the other way. Anti-clockwise. Don't ask me which one. No. <laughs> and then the other thing is obviously um, cuisine. I mean, you know, they do eat strange things. <laughs> well, I don't think they do compared to the Chinese. I think they... <laughs> That's true. But I'm not sure about the frog's legs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I shocked everybody when I ate my donkey's testicles. Oh, clever. That's well, I mean, the donkey, I had the donkey castrated. Oh, no, 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 it's too, much it's too much information. too much information. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it's, <laughs> we're here quite often in England years ago, people used to eat sheep's balls. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, I think they're very, very nice. <laughs> they are nice. I mean, there's nothing better than a pair of sheep's testicles. Like, and you get them, you know, in little slices with gently floured in <laughs> butter and garlic and parsley and salt and pepper. Delicious. Really, really good. I think people are a bit squeamish to try it, but if they tasted them, they'd just think they were like fish or something because they've got a slightly mm. fit and the texture is mm. quite nice. I'll tell you what I do love about the French is their pla <laughs> moving off, <laughs> moving away from that awful subject, is um, the plat de jours, the menus, which you, are such good value in the countryside. Like you can get five courses for 11 or 12 euros. I mean, you couldn't even make it five. for that. Five? I didn't do five anymore, three. No, they do soup, them. entree, main course, cheese, You're talking dessert. about at l'école? No, I'm talking about in Le Gou Rossignol. They do five. Five courses. They Blimey. do soup, yeah. entree, main course, yeah, cheese Yeah, no, it is good value, dessert. but there's not that many of those left anymore. They used euros. to be everywhere. I mean, yeah. years ago, we were talking about that with Marty yesterday. Mm. We used to go to these little restaurants where you'd have somebody sat out the back and she'd cook for the family and then cook for half a dozen workers who would come into the restaurant. So it was like a family kitchen where she'd just make a bit of extra food. And most of that food came from the garden, unfortunately. I hate to say it, but, you know, a lot of these European norms and standards and things mm. have closed all these small restaurants down because they mm. just don't meet the hygiene standards. And unfortunately, we lost a lot of really amazing places to eat. Mm. I didn't, I'll tell you what, I thought that the French didn't have as good a sense of humour as they actually have. Because my command of their language wasn't good enough to notice it because it's very dry. The French humour is mm. hilarious. 
but mm. you've got to get it because it's very subtle. And uh, there's no nation of people who can crack the best jokes without even cracking a smile. And if you don't get it, you, it's going to go straight over your head. And unfortunately, uh, that mm. I didn't get. And now I'm learning to get better at it than mm. they are. Mm. And that's... Uh, that, 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 that was the biggest surprise. Mm. Although I'd already travelled a lot in France, but because until you actually master the language to the point where you can get them back at their own game. Mm. And that is immense fun. Mm. The thing I've noticed, <laughs> that, that, that the men in France all like to wear a scarf. They're very well dressed. I'd say they make much more of an effort than you, the men in the UK. That ain't hard, is it? Do <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you, you walk around the supermarket, I hate to say this, and you can tell the Brits are mild off, can't you? Mm. I, mean, I know. Football no. shirts. <laughs> Yeah. Fancy bottoms. But yeah, no, I have noticed that the French are extremely stylish and I, that was my opinion of what they would be like. I not not as stylish like. as the Italians. Um, no. Um, depends. No. It depends no. where they are. But I, I, ha I did have a... The fashion is quite important in France. And I think there's also a lot of elderly women that make a real effort that still mm. wear makeup and dress beautifully and that is... Mm. I think, chic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very chic. And that was my opinion of the French and, and that has lived up to the opinion. Yeah. They are they are very chic and they are very well dressed. Yeah, mm. yeah I mean, you know, I, I, I did 32 years now and I'm still learning and I still love it. And, you know, I've just got back from a trip to the UK and it just reinforces the fact that I'm living in the right place. Did yeah, me too. You know? I, I would, you know, I've been here 20 years and I definitely would not move back to the UK. It, I just, the, the roads are empty, you know, it's beautiful mm. countryside, you've got fresh air, children are safe. I don't mm. even lock my front door half the time or, yeah. or my car. Mm. Um, it's just. You know, the quality of life is, yeah, is, is much, far better. Much better. Yeah. And yet the French are always moaning and never happy. <laughs> <laughs> Specifically French. There you go. 